So when a pro gambler called Joe told me he had a surefire way to make money off the bookies, but with no risk attached, I simply had to find out more. So why are we here at a tennis court in the middle of Sussex? <laughs> We're here to see court siding today. Uh, court siding is basically cheating. It's getting on a point before the umpires press the button and the bookmakers have applied their in-play delay. Right, okay. And why, why, why tennis? Tennis is, is dynamic and it's catatonic. So big things happen on every point and also right. points happen quickly. Okay, so what the balls is this court siding racket? Well, most gambling apps allow you to bet live in play on the outcome of a single point or game. Court siding works by having someone physically at the match to exploit time delays of just a few seconds between a point being won or lost and the umpire inputting the score to an electronic device. The info from the umpire is transmitted to the bookies around the world so they can update the odds on their services. But the courtsider shares that same information faster with a partner in crime who can place a bet instantly on the outcome of something that's already happened. So we go around the world trying to find slow umpires. So that's it. Yeah, that is exactly. So we will go to a tournament and we go, old woman with grey hair, she's there. They're, they're undoing their case, they're, they're sliding it to the side, they're pressing it, they're having to put but their pin code in. I had one in Romania. He had to put his pin code in for every point. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it locked him Because it would lock him out, yeah, and he couldn't find a way around it. How often will you courtside? I would say we aim to courtside tennis about 35 weeks a year. Wow. Um, Just in England? No. Well. No, no, no. Ma mainly in America. Right. Um, we were also expanding. We had a lot of success in South Africa last year. I'm going to Uganda soon. Uh, Canada's a Canada's a good one right, as well. Okay. You want to keep away from Europe. Right, why? Because it's teeming with courtsiders. Right, okay. Yeah. So when you are courtsiding, how do you how do you communicate with each other? Well in the old days we used to just I used to just do it on my phone. I'd be there so you take your phone. own mobile. Yeah, I'd take okay. my own, own mobile and obviously that was great because I didn't have to share any of the profits. Yeah. Um but now you'll just be gone. Right, um, right. headphones are not you'll be gone as well. Really? So I, eighteen months ago I decided the thing to do was grow my hair, cover my um, ear, and put the Bluetooth in. So and you've grown your hair as a disc uh, to basically hide your Bluetooth? Hide the Bluetooth, yes. Oh, wow, that yeah. is mad. So to beat the bookies, you're growing your hair yeah, to hide your Bluetooth. That's it, yeah. What would you be looking to make? Last year, me and my business partner would have cleared a million pounds from the court siding. What, mate? Um, a million quid? Yeah, the only problem is that obviously there's humongous expenses, so that won't be the, the profit, but I, I sort of hope to make three three 350,000 a year profit. So, But the one incentive is I hate, absolutely hate the bookmakers. I just I couldn't think of worse people. Well, you could think of worse people, yeah, they're but they're not. They're not far. You've turned it over there. You, you, you don't like them, do you? No, no, no. I just I just feel like they've contributed to some some terrible things, and you know I I nearly destroyed my whole life. Yeah. Just going hungry, all that sort of thing, because I was addicted to roulette machines, and yeah, you know, I just just hate it. Court siding is not illegal, but it does break the T's and C's of the betting operators and it's outlawed by the governing bodies of tennis. It also requires the use of multiple betting accounts, so Joe buys accounts from other people. Again, this is not illegal, but very much breaks bookmakers' rules. So why do you have to have these different accounts? Why, why, why are they shut yours down? Because I bet in the style of someone in the long run that was going to win. You've got to think bookmakers want bets from mugs. So you've got all these accounts. Yes. How long will it take for you to get shut down by these? Uh... It can take 30 seconds if I bet on court siding, and it can take three months if I decide to try and make the accounts look like I'm a complete mug. They'll think, oh, okay, he's had 25 terrible bets, but this, these, so we'll give him five or six good bets, and you don't want to give me five or six good bets to take them apart. How many betting accounts do you have at, at the moment? About 200, but I'm always buying. So who are these 200? University students, probably 150 of them. Do you think they'll clamp down on that at some point? 
they can't really. The only person who can clamp, uh, the only organisation that can clamp down on it is the Gambling Commission yeah. and the regulator. The reason why is because there's so many university students burning their student loans with different bookmakers. Like, I lost 20,000 on an 18 year old girl who goes to university's betting account in maybe three or four months. Right, okay. No questions asked. So sad. As Joe said himself, court signing felt a bit like cheating. But I wondered if it was true that the bookies would shut you down for simply not betting like a mug. So I asked another professional gambler called Ed to play some well-informed football bets from... Now the brain's broken. And Joe, who we met in Brighton, he is in Florida at a tennis tournament. He's going to court side later on, so I'm going to call up, get some intel from him, um, some info. He's basically going to instruct me, tell me what to put the bets on. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about it. As you can tell from the reaction, so I'm jumping out so this is him now. Joe. Hello. Hello. Where are you, pal? At the moment, I'm in uh, Innisbrook Resort in uh, Palm Harbour, Tampa. And how long have you been there? I flew over yesterday. I caught sight in Tampa. How did that go down? Yeah, that went okay, actually, yeah. I mean, you've got quite a good opportunity here because... You've, you've had your account for a long time. Yeah. Your, your bets have been muggish. Yeah, they, they, they are mug bets. Not all of them. Forever. Not all of them. Uh, uh, yeah, they are mug bets, and mug bets can still win. Okay. Uh, and, a, and a good bet can still lose. Yeah. Got you, understood. Um, Joe, can you just quickly show us where we are? Just turn your phone around so we can see where you're... Yeah, I'm going to walk and I'll show you the side on view of the, um, of the court safe. So, so this is centre court. This is... Oh, so there's like a grandstand. Yeah, wow. I'm surprised. It's 10 feet. I'm surprised it's a bit. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Bye. 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 It's a lot of pressure. It just feels weird. It feels, it feels murky. I'm nervous now. I'm like sweaty palms just like thinking about it. As if the pressure of court siding wasn't already enough, we also get a tip from Ed the Wolves are a good shout. Here we go. Joe's in position and ready to courtside in Florida. We'll pick it up. Hello. What are you watching? One second. Uh, game four is 11 to 8. Server is on 14 to 1. This was already incredibly confusing, and I was feeling pretty lost. I knew the theory of what was going on. Joe was telling me to bet on the player serving or the player returning the ball. And I had to get the bet on before the umpire called the point. But doing all that under time pressure was a different story. Return of 1 to 12. Oh. I don't know what I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, one second. It was impossible to keep up with what Joe was saying, or even what game he was watching. It wasn't going well, and Wolves were 1 0 down. So when I say calling the server, what was that like? So you're telling me to, 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 to say yes if the server wins the point? Yeah. So we're going to the 8th, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's suspended. Seven. Nine. 
runs in the server, one to two. Yeah, we got on, but Kasha is suspended. Balance is 14 14. Things were starting to click into place, and a quick check on the footy bet Ed gave me, Wolves had levelled with the balance and about 1700 on the return of 1 to 5. Finally, finally felt like I was beating the bookies. Balance 2190. £2,000 on the server, 2 to 9. Refreshing the balance, refreshing the balance one second. Okay, in the part is £2,698. Calling server, Danila, 5 to 6. What's that? £2,800. Two and a half grand on one to five. Come on. Hasn't gone through yet. I'm getting very nervous. It's come through. £3,331. Joe? Yeah, to the legend. Mate, I was good at, I was good though, wasn't I? Thank you, Joe, it means the world. Uh, listen, we'll give you a shout tomorrow. That is mad. I was on the phone to a man in Florida that was trying to find slow umpires. Found slow umpires. We started off with 800 quid. We've got 3,331 pounds. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Just go look at the football now. And Wolves are 2 well up against me. Cash out's been suspended full time. Just one seven on the other on the main night game as well. This is great. In total, the court siding made me £2,531, and the football bet from Ed added another £700, putting me up £3,231. Get the kitchen ready, there it is. I am, at the moment, tonight, beating the bookies, but with the help of a lot of people. Feels feels good. That hand is the sweatiest it's ever been, and it's done some things in the time that we've made it probably sweatier. We've never had those tennis players. We've just uh, like won three and a half thousand pounds. It's like, yeah, it's mad. Woke up this morning, and an hour after we put we got the money back, we got an email from Bet365 saying our account's been restricted. It's happening. And I will read you what they have said. They've said, Hi Lloyd, following a review of your account by our trading team, we regret to inform you that we are no longer able to offer you our telephone betting service, which I didn't use in the first place. And whilst our online service remains available to you, betting restrictions will be applied on any future bets placed, and the cash out feature is no longer available to you. Okay, so I'm going to bet on... Actually, let's say West Ham 1-0. So it's saying bet max is £6.00. And six pence. 
Even though I've now been effectively banned from sports bets, the gambling companies are still only too happy to let me bet as much as I want on their casino games.